Greetings and welcome to the world by 2030. I'm Gerd Leonhardt with my friend and colleague Anton Musgriff. We've been talking quite a bit about artificial intelligence, intelligent computing, and what it means for leadership. Uh, we talk to a lot of leaders, both of us, and we're getting this question a lot. What's going to change when computers become smart and we can have machines doing what we used to do? And what does it mean for leaders? And um, this is a very big question, right? Because leadership has always been a big topic, but now it's kind of feels like we're entering a different domain, a different way of looking at life. Yeah? Yeah. So what do you foresee as leaderships, as leadership is going forward into this intelligent, cognitive world? Good, it's clear to me that we're entering a new epoch, if you like, for leadership. Um, in the old world, it was all about your knowledge. Could you understand a complex industry? Did you have all the answers because of technical expertise, experience, et cetera, et cetera? That world is past. In the new world, imagine where in the corner of the boardroom, there's an AI, an intelligent machine that remembers every company strategy, budget, competitor analysis, market shift, uh, economic report, et cetera, et cetera. Never gets sick, never sneezes, never forgets a single thing. In that realm, in that world, what value contribution will you bring to the table? It can't be about your knowledge any longer. It can't be about knowing the answers to questions because we don't know the answers to questions. It's about the courage and the humility to say, I don't know. Help me understand this new future. Help me create a custom experience, a value proposition together that will move the needle, if you like. Mm -hmm. It's about just admitting, I don't know the answer. And, and CEOs, you know, very often have uh, very, I call them talented self-believers, you know. Uh, they find that really, really difficult. Mm -hmm. And so we have to say, what is that fifth dimension of thinking, second and third order synthesis and insight around opportunities and maybe threats? Uh, and then using the collective knowledge around the table to have a conversation, not about facts, not about budget, not about margins, not about ratios, but about insights mm -hmm. that humans can have that the machine in the corner can't. Yeah, the, you know, leadership has always been quite a bit about imagination and intuition, yes. uh, really. Well, of course, that very much relates to character skills and, and personality traits. Yep. And some leaders are more imaginative or risk-taking. You know, Richard Benson is different than, you know, other people in the business who are very logic-oriented. And, mm -hmm. you know, Jeff Bezos thinks differently than, than uh, you know, Steve Jobs did or so. So very important, I think, when we look at artificial intelligence, that all of a sudden knowledge is something that machines can have. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Well, it's binary knowledge. You know, it's, you know, it's, it's simple knowledge, but, but nevertheless. So I can ask very complex questions and get answers based on analytics and data and mm. predictions and all of these things, right? Mm. That is very much within reach the next few years to be able to look at that. So now I have to go back and say, what is my imagination going to do about this? And what about my intuition, my foresight, my understanding? Because, you know, a machine understanding goes to a certain level on this sort of Maslow pyramid. Mm -hmm. The lower part is really about data information and simple knowledge. Yeah. And then it's about deeper knowledge, tacit knowledge, intuition, consciousness, human agency, spirituality, and all these things. And in the end, that's what makes a good leader, you know, to bring all of those two things. And they're not really about logic, about uh, that part of it. They're really about art in a way. Yeah. Right? Uh, I mean, th Steve Jobs, rest in peace, said the same thing always, that basically uh, success is about uh, the idea of technology and logic, but also art. Mm -hmm. right? and, and this is really where it comes together. And I think AI will force us to focus on our imagination yep. to find the way forward yep. to understand complex world. Because let's face it, a machine does not understand the real world. You know? mm -hmm. It understands the digital world, which right. is quite good and, and very useful, but yeah. it's, a, it's only a, a small fraction it's of the It's one real dimension, world. Yeah. you know, and what we need to become very good at and Unfortunately, in business schools, I don't think we teach this enough or we develop this skill enough, I'm not sure, is, is this intuition, the second and third order insights better than everyone else of two and three step changes later mm -hmm. beyond today. What does that really mean? So for me, I would say the two most important words for CEOs and uh, leadership in the world of artificial intelligence is firstly curiosity and everything around that that is exposed and opened up. Mm -hmm. So am I exploring? Am I thinking? Am I having different conversations? Am I talking to different people? Am I talking to people outside of just optimization in the motor industry or in the entertainment industry, for example? Because as technology happens, 
we find that the values created very often go at the intersection of industries. So it's not about a deep knowledge of your industry, it's about learning and, and developing insights from others. So curiosity in its wide sense. The second, I think, in a world of more smart machines, the leadership skill that we need is empathy and insight around humans. Do I connect with you at a fundamentally human level? You know, it's interesting, I joined a financial services company many years ago and said to the chairman, let's do a customer satisfaction survey. And I knew we all hate surveys, so I framed 10 simple questions, three minutes only, deeply profound. And he looked at them and he said, brilliant questions, Anton. Do me one favor. Before we send this to a single client, ask your wife these questions tonight <laughs> about your relationship. Okay. And I suddenly went, aha. In the human world of real relationships, if I dared ask my wife these questions, it would be the end of the relationship. So, so how do we develop that connection with people at a very simple but yet deeply profound level? Mm -hmm. So humanness, people, connection, and curiosity, ideas, innovation, openness, etc. Combine those, that's the next new CEO. Yeah, it goes back to the definition of uh, intelligence also, right? because intelligence is, uh, is complex for humans, it's about eight different things, right? <laughs> Emotional intelligence, social intelligence, kinesthetic intelligence, musical intelligence, intellectual intelligence. Machines only have one kind of, of intelligence, yeah. and, and well, that's not really intelligent, but one kind of, of skill. skill there, right? So this is about logic, about numbers, about facts, about yes or no. Yeah. Uh, when we have quantum computing, which is maybe 10 years, we will have a machine that cannot do yes or no, that can mm. do maybe, like humans do. Yes. Right? Yes. Until then, it's yes or no. Mm. So what the machine is much better at is anything that's about logic and facts and numbers yeah. and figures and yeah. you know all that um, machine stuff. Yeah? Mm. And so if we use that, then we can take our intelligence, emotional, cultural, social intelligence, and of mm. course other kinds of intelligence, to bring it all together. Yeah. But if we look at it, I think the reality is currently machines understand 3 to 5% of reality based on, and, and so it's like the best possible camera in the world that records the scene, you know, currently has about 3% understanding of the vision of human, uh, of the human vision. Yeah. So I can use my eyes, my ears, and you know, I, it's, it's 100%, but the machine that gets 3%. That's right. So if I use that information and it's really powerful stuff, I need to focus on the things that I can do best, you know, which is not the logic, <laughs> right? it's, the, it's the unlogic, uh, if you wish. It is the inefficiency, not the efficiency. Mm. Um, and so in the end, I'm going to be a great leader if I can put this all together and I have a solution and I can imagine what it would be like. And that's where we see the best leaders in technology, for example, yeah. in the last decade. Uh, they all have this idea of you know, creativity, art, uh, understanding in a, in a wider sense. Yeah. If you look at Google, everyone that works for Google is super smart, right? They've got incredibly strong STEM skills, science, technology, engineering, and maths. Why do some teams in Google always outperform others? They did the research. The answer is the A, the arts. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Collaboration, teamwork, trust, safe environment, humanness, empathy. Those teams always outperform the others. But to do that as a CEO, as a leader, is you've got to make yourself vulnerable because you don't know the answer. Mm -hmm. And in the old world, I think CEOs have not wanted to be vulnerable. It's not easy. It takes real courage to do that. There's no example of a great leader in the world in any domain that was truly, truly courageous without vulnerability of some shape. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line, good, is that at a very practical level, CEOs shape the future by taking decisions. Decisions are that catalyst moment where you apply budget resources and you, and you do something. My challenge to CEOs is to say, how do you change the decisions you're taking today for this new, very exciting AI-enabled future? Well, change the decisions. So here are five questions. If you wanna really just have a sort of a paint by numbers, right? Ask yourself the question, is this decision fit for the future? Whatever that may be, but you need to have a view. Secondly, will this decision potentially deliver an exponential impact or just linear at best? Yeah. Thirdly, is it really future proof? Ask yourself the question, will this decision actually contribute to society 5.0? That world of utopia, mm -hmm. where we harness AI, where we better for humans, and we have a planet that's green and, and good. And finally, the, the, decision, the question is, will this decision actually unlock human aspiration? Mm 
Mm-hmm. Will this decision, when my people, my staff read it, actually inspire them to go above and beyond mm-hmm. because the objective is so laudable, so valuable? And if you can't answer yes to three of the five, hit the pause button. Just say, what do I need to change to make this decision future fit, aspirational, exponential, positively disruptive, and emotional, if you like. Yeah, I think there's a good effect also if we're looking at technology like AI allowing us to be more productive and faster and, you know, four or five times as productive. Mm. Maybe we can use the remaining time that we now have more time to work on the on the non-machine skills and spend more time on these questions. Correct. Like, I, I think the flip side of STEM is hecky, what I call hecky yes. in my book, humanity, ethics, creativity, imagination. Yeah. So can I practice my imagination? Mm-hmm. You know, and that's also practice intuition mm-hmm. and the, the things that were kind of not asked before. That's right. You know, because that's yeah. what I will need. And I think it's also very much a personality question, people who would yeah. want to do that and, and, and find their way forward. You know, the, the chief scientist for, I think it's IBM or, or one of the greats, spends one Saturday a month in the canteen of Ivy League universities with a pocket full of dollars. Mm-hmm. And what he, he does is buys hamburgers and beers for PhD students. And when you give them a hamburger and a beer, they're happy to talk about anything, right? <laughs> and he simply asks them, what are you thinking about? What are you exploring? What are the questions you're looking for answers on? Mm-hmm. And that gives him an insight. That changes the conversation. That triggers curiosity. And that's one of the big inputs into how he shapes his mind to make it ready for the unknown future. Yeah, we may want to wrap up with a quote by Einstein who said, imagination is more important than knowledge. And with AI, we can safely say we'll have more knowledge, (laughs) machine knowledge, but nevertheless, more data, more information, more knowledge. And so now we can work on our imagination, our intuition. Thanks very much for tuning in. Thank you. Thank you.